All right, guys, let's get some MLB plays and props for Wednesday, June 5th, slated game. Trey, let's take a look at that later more. Have it starts off. Yeah, guys, I went 0-1 on the game picks. I gave out the over 10.5 total runs in the Reds versus Rockies game. We had two doo-doo pitchers, uh, but they showed up in Coors Field. Don't know how that's possible. Uh, stats and logic say it is impossible, but, hey, that's life. There was only five total runs scored in this game, so that was frustrating. Yeah, absolutely crazy on that one. I had a 1-0 day. Dodgers Pirates under 3.5 total runs in the first five innings. They scored one the entire time. It was Tyler Glasgow and Jared Jones going head-to-head. Battle it out. They both went six innings. They were both flawless. So an easy cash there. One and day. Trey, let's go to the props. Have stars off. Yeah, guys, I went one and one over here. My loser was Nico Horner. Over one and a half hits plus runs plus RBIs against the White Sox. Horner, he went over four in this game. He was a big reason why the Cubs did not show up. Uh, but hey, Shota Imanaga, under one and a half earned runs allowed versus the White Sox. He was probably actually the reason why uh, the Cubs did not cover for me over on the member side. Uh, because he gave up five runs in this game. And you're probably like, Trey, but you gave yourself a win. How is that possible? Well, hey, I don't understand baseball either. He only gave up one earned run out of those five runs. Hey, that's baseball, baby. Uh, it's the air system. Like, they need to change the air system. It's absolutely insane. I don't know. I didn't watch the game, so I didn't see. But if you give up five runs, you should probably have some more earned. Um, usually what happens there is there's like two outs, and then there's an air, and then everything else that's on the base – and, like, if you give up a hit, the run doesn't count against you. So, I don't know. MLB needs to change that, I think. I have a 1-0 day so far. Uh, winner was Gunnar Henderson, over 1.5 bases. Dude scored five runs in this game, I think, maybe four runs. Uh, he was on base a lot, hit a double for us. I think it was in his third at-bat, so a 1-0 day there. Pitching prop, not looking great. Patrick Sandoval, over 2.5 earned runs. He's in the top of the six right now. He's got a runner on first and second. He's given up one run so far. Need the crone zone to come in clutch here and get an RBI or two uh, for him to go over his total run. So, Hopefully that happens and we can go two and on the day. Trey, let's take a look at the place for tomorrow, though. Have you start us off? Yeah, guys, I'm going to take us over to the San Francisco Giants going up against Arizona Diamondbacks game. And this one's going to be an interesting one to watch, not only because the starting pitchers are both named Jordan, but also because both teams are trying to make a push for the NL West. The Giants, if they're not Jordan Hicks, Hicks, he has a 4-2 and two record with a 2.7 ERA, paired with a 1.11 whip, and Hicks, He's in the top 10% of the MLB when it comes to ground ball rate. And keeping the ball on the ground is pivotal, uh, especially whenever uh, you're going up against the Diamondbacks. In Arizona, they are throwing out Jordan Montgomery here in this game. And Montgomery, he has a 3-3 three and three record with a 5.48 ERA, paired with a 1.56 whip in Montgomery. The advanced stats are not very kind for him. He's ranked in the bottom 20% of the MLB. An expected ERA, expected batting average, average fastball velo, and strikeout rate. I love the road team in this game. I'm going to go over to the first five innings. I'm going to take the San Francisco Giants at plus a half at minus 128. I love that we can get them here at plus a half because I think that they're going to be leading into the sixth inning. And if anything here, it's going to be tied heading into the sixth inning, which would still allow us to cash with the plus a half. And, yes, the Diamondbacks, they do have the better scoring office uh, this season, but I do believe with the two starting pitchers that we have, we're going to get treated to a low score and a fair here. So I'm going to go with the Giants here on the plus a half on the first five inning run line against the Diamondbacks. Yeah, I like the play there for you there, Trey. Uh, for my play today, we're going to be looking at the New York Mets going up against my Washington Nationals. Nationals are going to have Patrick Corbin on the mound, and we're going to take the over in this game because he might give up all these runs by himself going against the Mets. It's going to be Luis Severino going for the New York Mets. He's not been very good this season as well over the last five games. If you take a look at his stats, he's taken a massive hit to his confidence. His ERA has gone up 1.20 points in just the last five games. In those five games, he's given up four-plus runs in three of the five, and he's given up a total of 16 runs against the Marlins, the Giants, the D-backs, and the Braves. Two of those teams are horrible. He's had one of the worst starts, coming off one of the worst starts of the season. In his last game against the Diamondbacks, he gave up five runs, four of which were earned, six hits, a walk, and a home run in just five innings. I know the Nationals record-wise are not the best team right now, but they're able to hit the ball. I think they can get very hot in this game against Severino. I like to put up at least a couple runs on Luis Severino, and then Patrick Corbin's going to do the rest for us. Patrick, he's coming into this game with a 5.83 ERA, a 1.67 whip. I'd love to say those are his worst stats of his career. But over the last five seasons, this has been one of the worst pitchers that we've ever seen who's given multiple chances and continues to be a starter. The only reason I think he's starting – for the Nationals is because I think they're trying to hurt him. I really do. I think that's the only reason why he's in the starting rotation. In his 12 games so far this season, he's only been able to win one of those 12 appearances. It's the Jordan Lyles from the Kansas City Royals last season. 
Corbin, he's given up three plus runs in seven of the last 10 games. He's given up six plus hits in eight of the last 10 games. He's bringing his hit total up to 85 on the season in just 66 innings. The Mets, they're not a good team. Everybody can agree with that, but anybody can hit off Patrick Corbin at any time. I like him to give up several runs in this game. Give me the over with the two arms on the mound as the play. Trey, let's go to the props. Have you start us off? Yeah, guys, I'm going to take us over to uh, Jonah Heim here. I'm going to take him to go over a half hit against the Tigers. I love this over for Heim in this game because I think that we're seeing him get a hit here, and this is a little bit of a risky bet because – He's found damn near uh, the bottom of the Rangers batting lineup. In fact, he's at the eighth spot for the Rangers. So he's not going to get a ton of opportunities in this game. But even with his limited opportunities, I believe that Haim is going to cash. That is because of his matchup against Kinta Maeda. Maeda, he has a 6.25 ERA paired to 1.41 whip. Maeda, he's ranked in the bottom 20% of the MLB in a ton of advanced stats categories. And these two, they've only faced off in five career at-bats. But Haim, he does have an 800 career batting average against Maeda and even has a dinger. So I'm going to go with Jonah Haim here. I'm going to take him to go over a half hit versus the Tigers. Yeah, I like that there for you, Trey. Uh, for my play today, I'm taking Francisco Lindor over 1.5 base against the Nationals. I've already talked about Patrick Corbin a little bit. He's coming in with a 5.83 ERA, a 1.67 whip, 85 hits given up in just 12 games. Some of the worst numbers you're going to see this season in the Major League Baseball. You can probably take anybody on the New York Mets if you want anybody on any team that Patrick Corbin is going against. He'll probably give up at least half half the team will probably get a hit off of him whenever he's on the mound. But just over the last seven games, he's given up six plus hits in six of those seven games. And he hasn't been facing high quality opponents either. He went up against the Guardians, the Mariners, the White Sox, the Blue Jays, the Twins, and the Red Sox. I'm going with Lindor in this game because he's been a lot better at the plate over the last five. His batting average was barely sitting above 200 late in May. Now he's hitting 228, collecting eight hits over the last five games. He's been dialed into the plate, and there hasn't been a lot of pitching around Lindor this season for the Mets. He's only drawn 19 walks this year. Teams are going right at him. I think Patrick Corbin's going to go right at him because that's the only mode Patrick Corbin has, throw it right down the middle. And I think he's going to get a lot of opportunities in this game to hit some balls very far against Patrick Corbin. So I'm taking Lindor here over 1.5 bases as the play. Trey, let's go with the pitching props. How do you start us off? Yeah, guys, I'm going to go with Logan Gilbert here, and I'm going to take him to go over 18 and a half outs going up against the Athletics. I love this over for Gilbert in this game. Even though this is a massive number, we do need him to pitch six and one-third innings to cash this bet. But I do believe that he's going to pitch that deep here in this game, and that's because of Gilbert's matchup against the A's. Gilbert historically owns Oakland, and he's pitched against the A's in nine career starts. And Gilbert, he is 2-0 and in those starts with a 3.33 ERA. And I do expect him to carry that momentum into this start, too. And uh, that is because the A's, they simply cannot score runs to save their life. Uh, they check in third from last in the MLB when it comes to runs per game in the first five innings. Because Oakland, they only average 1.95 runs per game during that span. That's going to allow Gilbert to pitch deep into this game. And that's going to allow him to hit the over for us. So give me Logan Gilbert. I'm going to take him to go over 18 and a half outs versus the A's. Yeah, I like that one there for you as well. Uh, for my pitching prop, Miles Pecoulos. Over 2.5 earned runs going against the Astros. I think I did this last Friday where I attacked both Miles Pecoulos and Patrick Corbin. I was able to win both of those plays with these guys on the mound. I'm looking to do it again because we've been gifted another day where both of these guys are starting at the same time. Miles is coming into this game with a 5.54 ERA, a 1.32 whip. About the same as Patrick Corbin, but just a little bit better. He gives up a ton of hits and runs as well. He's been in 12 games this season also, 65 innings. He's given up 72 hits and 40 runs. He's given up three-plus runs in seven of the last ten games. And the Cardinals and the Nationals, I say this all the time, if they would just take these guys out at like the third inning, they really just need to make them relief pitchers. But if they take them out at the third inning as starting pitchers, I think they'd be considered some of the best pitchers in baseball. For some reason, once these guys get through the lineup one time and it seems these are stuff the second time around, the third time around, it's chalked. They can't get they can't get it out. Everybody gets a hit against them. Uh, that's normal for a lot of guys. But the numbers, the second time around for Patrick Corbin and Miles McCullough, they're some of the worst in baseball. Sometimes these guys are just so bad they give it up in the first inning. But more times than not, both of these teams leave their starting pitcher in, and it, they suffer the consequences leaving them in past the fifth inning. The Houston Astros, they have a ton of power in that lineup, and all it takes is a couple walks and a home run for us to hit this play. I love Jose Altuve to start off uh, with a bang here going up against Miles McCullough destroy his confidence even more than it is. But I'm going to take Miles McCoolis here over 2.5 runs going up against the Astros at the play. Trey, let's go to the graphic. Have you start us off? Yeah, guys, I went with the Giants plus a half on the first five-inning run line against the Diamondbacks. I love Jordan Hicks in this game against Jordan Montgomery. And I just feel like, uh, if anything, this game's going to be tied going into the sixth inning. So I love the plus a half there. 
with the road team. Also going with Jonah Heim. Over a half hit against the Tigers. He's going up against Quinta Maeda, and that is just a uh, barbecue. Uh, put on a skewer right there for Jonah Heim to hit out of the ballpark. Also going with Logan Gilbert, over 18.5 outs versus the A's. Gilbert, he's been as consistent as can be this season, and he historically owns the A's, and he has been very, very efficient, and I expect him to pitch deep. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Nets, or the Nets, the Mets and the Nationals, over nine runs scored in this game. Patrick Corbin going up against Luis Severino. I wouldn't be surprised at all if this is in the first five innings over nine. They give me Lindor in the same game, over 1.5 base going up against Patrick Corbin, and then Miles McCullough's over 2.5 runs going up against the Astros. They got a ton of power. Hopefully, again, Altuve can start us off with a bang, and then Miles from there is just going to be horrible. So I love the play there as well. Guys, it's going to do it for the MLB Picks and Props for Wednesday, June 5th, Slate of Games. If you guys enjoyed the content, please sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys next video, and thanks for watching. Super Bowl. We also have 12,000 subs coming right around the bend. We're at 10,200. We're going to give away two tickets to anybody, to any game they want, NBA, NFL, college basketball. It doesn't matter. We can wait until the new season for NFL. Any game you want to go, whenever we get to 12K, we're going to have that uh, giveaway coming up as well. Leaderboard. We had multiple questions this morning about how to become a member for the YouTube channel. Let's do that really quick tutorial. You're going to go to YouTube.com. You're going to go to Bears Profit Plays. You're going to search it in. You're going to hit our thing. There's a join button right just to the right of the subscribe. You're going to click that. There's two options. You have the Bear Pack for $4.99. That gives you access to YouTube member plays. And then you have the Bear Pack Gold for $7.99 a month. That gives you access to our member plays on YouTube. And it gives you a one-month membership to our website, BearsProfitPlays.com. So if you get the Bear Pack Gold, you save yourself 2 bucks a month. A little bit cheaper if you want to do that. But that is the tutorial for anybody that needed it. We had multiple questions today through email about how to do it, and it wasn't working. But if you want to know, there it is right there. Trey, 